Hi everybody, welcome back, and if you're new, welcome to the channel. As you probably guessed from the thumbnail, this episode is about painting, whitewash in particular, um, lime wash for the British. If you're like me, your association with whitewash is probably Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn. I think it is making a comeback in the US, which is good, because it's a great all-natural paint. It's cheap, easy, all-natural, absorbs carbon dioxide and it just works great. I painted my house in Nicaragua with it and it did a great job. It held up great even in the extreme weather, the crazy heat and super intense tropical thunderstorms. It's also the traditional paint here and probably most places. So this video has a lot of just painting. Some people like it, some people don't. If you don't, feel free to skip ahead. And if you do, enjoy. I'm JD and I moved from Alaska to Portugal after I paid $15,000 to buy this old house that has sat empty for years. Now I'm in the process of renovating it on a budget in order to return it to its former glory and welcoming you on the DIY journey. But first, a quick disclaimer. I'm sure the algorithm loves all the comments, but I just want you all to know that I have hours and hours and literal days of OSHA, hazmat, has whopper, every kind of safety training you can think of, even unexploded ordnance. So I'm well aware of appropriate PPE and when it's appropriate, when it's not. I'm also older than I look. I've worked in construction and industrial areas for almost 20 years, so I have plenty of experience knowing what works best for me. So just know that I'm in good hands and whatever PPE I wear or don't wear is a educated, conscious decision on my part based on my assessment of physically being there and knowing all the hazards involved. And I know most of the comments come from a good place and I, don't, I just don't want you all to be concerned. Just know that I'm in good hands, I know what I'm doing, um, but I appreciate the concern. That being said, in TV and movies and stuff, when someone's driving and like turned having a conversation with a passenger instead of looking at the road, it drives me crazy. So I will make an effort, but still get used to flip flops and no work gloves. So for those that don't know, lime is predominantly made from limestone. You can also make it from seashells or anything that's predominantly calcium carbonate, but so when you burn limestone, it releases carbon dioxide and you're left with calcium oxide, which in English is quick lime. And when you add water to that, it becomes hydrated lime calcium hydroxide. So the Calviva quick lime, it's very reactive with water. Um, you don't want it anywhere near your eyes or mucous membranes or anything. It's a very exothermic reaction. It generates a lot of heat. The hydrated lime, it's been reacted, so it's stable, much safer, but for some reason, very, very hard to find in Coimbra, at least. There's seem like plenty of it at stores an hour away, but this was the only bag at the one place I found that had it. This bag was four something euros, less than five euros, so about five dollars US um, for five kilos. And this bag is 20 kilos, was 8.50 euros, around nine dollars US. I think the main price difference is just because this is more bulk, so you get that discount. This is what I'm used to using. It's way safer. You don't have to go through the extra step of hydrating it. So I'm just gonna use this. So I'm sure there's various methods to make whitewash, but I'm just gonna do it how I did it in Nicaragua, um, cause that's what I know and I know it worked good. So it's essentially, and it doesn't have to be exact at all. So it's essentially one part hydrated lime, two parts water, and salt. I'll probably use about half of this. It's a kilo, so half a kilo. 
Um, this is like 29 cents from just down at the beach in Figuera de Fage. My understanding is the salt helps to harden it. At my place in Nicaragua, you could like rub it with your hand and it wouldn't come off or anything. Um, Cause I know that's like a concern a lot of people have is that it rubs off easily, but I never had that issue. And ideally I would also add some boric acid. Whitewash is naturally resistant to mold and mildew and all that stuff. And the boric acid just makes it more so. But I could only find it online and it's really cheap, but the shipping was way more than the cost of the thing itself. So I'll just see how it does without it for now. So in Nicaragua, after mixing it all up, you let it sit overnight, and I don't know if that's just because the hydrated cow there is poor quality and you need to let any unreacted parts react, but that's how I've done it before and it worked good, so I'm going to do that now. So we'll just let this sit. Um, so we'll just let this sit overnight and come back in the morning. I'll need to clean off all this moss, so I'll just scrub it off with this brush.
so now I'm just scraping away like the old layers of paint that are flaking off so just to have a, a smooth surface so there's not pieces chipping off and stuff. So it's the next day. It's actually afternoon because we're kind of in a little heat wave right now. So I figured best wait till that side of the house is in the shade. This is all ready. It's it settles, so you have to just restart it. So far, this seems way better quality than the stuff in Nicaragua because that would have like a thick layer of sand at the bottom, and this just seems really nice and smooth so yesterday afternoon I had some filming problems that I didn't get resolved until it was too late to start painting so now it's the next day I also felt like I should have added more salt so I went ahead added more salt and uh, just the rest of the bag And I also feel like I probably only should have made half as much as I did, but the good thing about it is lime is air hardened or air cured, so as long as you keep it wet, it's good forever pretty much. So you can see it goes on kind of transparent, but turns white as it dries. And it's easiest to go with like an upward motion. So since it's so hot, it's dried really fast and 
you can see there's it's not very even so that second layer will take care of that and hopefully that should be it it won't need a third So I ended up using about half what I made, so it turns out that I probably did make the right amount because now I'm going to do the trim and stuff in red. That's what it was before, so I'm just going to stick with it for now. I've never used colored whitewash, so this will be a new experiment. I'll be using this, um, just iron oxide rust, essentially. This bottle was four euros. I probably overpaid for it, but but I was at the hardware store and just grabbed it since it's a hassle getting to the store. It says to use 10 to 11%. Um, I don't know if that's by weight or what, but I'll just keep adding it until it seems like a good color. Um, I'm just gonna color half of this because the area of the red is a lot less and I feel like it'll only need one coat, so I'm just gonna divide this in half and just color half of it. I have no idea what this will look like once it's dry, so I guess this is good. So now the sun's behind the house, so it's much cooler now. Um, and I'm just gonna paint all this trim, and hopefully it'll only need one coat.
So this will be an issue, but I'll see what I can do. So because it's so textured, it seems like just pushing it in is the best method. So since I didn't finish yesterday, I'm up very early um, with some coffee. Um, up very early to finish the painting before the heat, hopefully. <laughs>
So there's still a fair amount of red left, so I'll just go along and make this thicker to use it up and then the rest white. And for this, I can't find the sandpaper, but you can just scrape it and then I'll just touch it up with some white. A third coat would cover up all these brush marks, but it looks good from a distance and that's all I'm going for. And it... Nice and clean. So next week's video will just be like a Q&A to answer a lot of y'all's questions about how I found the house, the buying process, why I chose this area, all that stuff. Um, I have to go to Lisbon for my Seth appointment, so I won't be doing anything on, with the house. Um, Seth is like the immigration department. Um, I have the appointment for my residency permit. I'm actually kind of nervous because the visa application just to get here didn't go so good at first. Um, it's been essentially a year-long process for what at the time was a one-year visa. And uh, I plan to do a whole video on that in the future once everything's all finished. But for a preview, I did do a podcast interview with Expats Everywhere, so I'll put a link um, in the description for that for those that are interested. I also want to say just a great big thank you to everybody that's been so nice and helpful and friendly and 
helping me not be so nervous. Like this channel has just grown way faster than I could have ever imagined. It's kind of hard to comprehend. Like the last video got 40,000 views in the first day and I don't even know how to process that. Like, honestly, I don't know if I would watch my own channel. Like, I'm just Tina Belcher without the confidence. But y'all have been so friendly and positive and I just really appreciate it. And I'm glad y'all like the videos that I'm putting out. And hopefully I'll keep doing it because it is really helpful with keeping me on track getting stuff done with the house. So thanks again, everybody, so much, and I'll see y'all next week. Ciao.